Welcome to part 44. In the next video or two, I want to cover how to build out a change password form. And this should give you a foundation for building out additional forms of your own for um, further CMS functionality. So I'm going to be working with the files within the settings folder. Um, that's within app settings. And we have three main files there. Uh, we have m underscore settings within the models folder. We have password.php and we have v underscore password.php within the views folder. And I think I'm going to start out with password.php. Like so. So I'm going to start out with an opening PHP tag. I want to do an include. And I want to include init.php. And that will take care of setting up the content management system. And I also want to include our settings model. And while I'm at it, I'm going to create a settings object like so and I think I'm going to pause this particular page right here let's jump to the models and at least get the basics set up so all I need to do here let's um, start out with a comment So basically, this particular model will take care of all tasks related to the current user settings. It could be change password, it could be change username, change personal details, you know, whatever you want to build out. But in this specific case, I'm going to be building out a function that allows us to change the password. So class settings. And within this, I'm going to create a function change password. And it's going to accept two parameters user and the new pass. And I'm just going to leave this function alone for the moment. Work first on the main controller in the view, and then come back to this file in a bit. So back here, um, after we've created our settings object, let's also make sure that the user is logged in properly. So I do that with fp auth check authorization. And assuming they are logged in and everything's fine, PHP will just continue down this file. And I think the next step is going to be checking if the change password form has been submitted. I'll do an if is set. And I'll check for the post data, um, specifically if the submit button has been pressed. Otherwise, else, I want to go ahead and load the view. That's going to do like this. It'll be um, fp template load. And we're going to load settings views v underscore password dot php. So let's save that and at the moment um, this should work fine if we take a look at this page we should just get a blank page because there's nothing within our view yet um, but let me go ahead and work on the view next
So within our view, the first thing I want to do is load that template file we created earlier. And that's within core templates t underscore page underscore head dot php. And I'm going to copy this and do the same thing, except it's going to be the footer template instead. And within this file, um, I guess I may as well just open up the dashboard view um, and copy this entire section, the middle section here, because that's basically what we're working with. Um, so we can leave all this alone. The only difference is here within the right column. And rather than H2 with dashboard, Give me h2 with change password. And then we want the, our form. It's going to have an action of blank, so it redirects to the same page. Method of post. An ID of edit. My class of wide label, which I'll explain more in a couple minutes. And within this form, I'm going to start out with a div, and that div is going to hold any alert messages. Um, for example, if the user didn't fill in all the form fields, or you know whatever else goes on with the form, we want to be able to display alert messages. And if you've worked with the um, object-oriented PHP login series that I did, some of this code should be recognizable. So uh, PHP, and I'm going to set a variable alerts equals this get alerts, and if alerts is not blank, I want to echo out an unordered list. with a class of alerts. Then I want to echo out the alerts themselves. And finally the closing unordered list. There you go. So this first section will display any alerts that are related to this form. And the next one, we're going to have a div of a class row. And we have a label for, and it'll be for an element called old pass. And to indicate which fields in this form are required, I'm going to use a span with a class of required. And I'll add a star there. That should be pretty obvious. That's um, sort of a universal symbol for this field is required, this little star. So we have our label in place. Let's actually include the input now. So input type of password, name is old pass, it needs to match what the for is. We'll also set the ID to old pass as well. And the value is going to be a little bit of a PHP echo this get data. old pass. And finally is the last element within this row class. I'm going to have another div, the class of error. And within this we're going to echo out this get data. error underscore old pass. 
like so. So what this does is this creates a row within our form that contains a label, an input, and any related error messages. And I can basically copy and paste this twice because the first one is the old, the first row is the old password, the second one is the new password, and the third one is the new password just repeated. So let me go through and change all the various um, fields here. So instead of old pass, this will be new pass. Okay, I believe that looks good. And then same thing down here. So this is new pass and the number two. Okay, so, so far in our form we have a row for our different alert messages and then three rows each for individual uh, form elements within this table. And finally, we have a div with a class of row and submit row. And this is going to be our submit button here, so input type of submit, name submit, class of submit, and finally a value, oopsie, a value of submit. Okay, like so. So I believe that takes care of this view file. As a quick reminder and uh, explanation as I go here, when we use iframes as the um, CMS settings was set up in the last couple of videos, we were actually going to use a proper form submit process rather than the AJAX and jQuery that we were using to um, edit content areas or to log in. So we're going to go ahead and just use a standard post submit. Um, so the process will be user visits this page. Um, if the form has been submitted, we're going to process, process it here. Otherwise, we're going to load the view. And the view will have various um, data fields that are automatically populated for us. So let me go ahead, um, I think I'll just save what I have and do a quick preview and see where we are at the moment. There we are. So it looks like we're headed in the right direction. Um, everything looks good. We're going to have to change some CSS styles, just a little bit here and there. But uh, this looks pretty good. So I think as the last thing in this particular video, let's go ahead and tweak that CSS. So if we open up um, within resources, CSS, let's see what do we need to change. Um, we need, I'm going to copy this line here, fp underscore wrapper and, and uh, dot required. I'm going to paste it below and I'm going to specify any spans with the class of required. I'm going to set border to zero so it overrides this. I'm keeping this particular line because I don't want to accidentally overwrite functionality that we've previously written, or in this case, styles that we've previously written. So border zero and a color, I'll just leave it as red. 
And then the other thing that I wanted to do, if you remember, let's look at our view again. You notice I have a class of wide label. And that's because if you take a look, I want these labels to all be on one line and this actually wraps to two lines. So that's pretty easy to fix. Um, I think I'll just put it, what's the best spot? I guess right after our FP wrapper underscore label or FP underscore wrapper label. So FP wrapper that wide label label and this way we're going to set a different width um, I think I'll set a width of 160 pixels I believe that should work for us there we go so that works a little bit better um, we could even probably modify that and make that 150 and it'd work just fine Okay, so next step is to actually have our form be processed properly and to access the model and update the database. But I'm going to handle that in the next video.